But I think having that personality on camera is key. Because why are there so many YouTubers that are so popular now? They're getting millions upon billions of views, and they're just these teenagers in their bedrooms being themselves. Why is that more captivating than this professional who's been, you know, doing doing their job for thirty years in the field, and they yeah have all this experience? Welcome to our episode with Hong Kong's very own Andrew So. Andrew is accomplished in the world of media, and will be sharing how we can use her strategies in business. Andrea, welcome to the show. Hi, Darren. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's interesting because、uh, we caught up recently,、mm -hmm. and then I've told you about the show. We want more content about teaching real estate professional how to go online,、mm -hmm. and now and then you're so generous enough to like you know. Kind of say about oh why not we talk about how to be on camera how to prepare how to build a character so I want to say as a friend thanks so much I, I really need this no、yeah. the pleasure is all mine because this is something that、um, I don't think a lot of people realize I might have a little more experience in so this is a great chance for me to share something that I love that I'm passionate about and also catch up with you <laughs> yeah why not so you know like this episode、um, is talking about character building、mm -hmm. and then. A lot of people might be listening in, or real estate professional. They will ask, "Hey, I'm just selling properties. Why would I care about building a character?"、Mm -hmm. So, what is what do you think about that? What's the misconception when it comes to like you know, building a character on camera and so on? Well, I think every time you speak on camera, this is a chance for you to use that platform to say what you want to say and connect with your audience, and. Often, more often than not, it's a lot easier for someone to remember you if you're relatable, or something about your personality clicks with them, or or whatever you're saying interests them. And I think if you don't work on how to present yourself on camera in a way that you want, it's going to be really hard for you to engage the audience when you really want to. So off camera, you've got your own personality. It's someone who you've been for. X amount of years, you're used to this person. But on camera, you have to be aware of certain things that are going to captivate the audience more. Or if you speak a certain way with certain facial expressions or with certain hand gestures, that might help the situation. And there, and in, and in that, I think.、Um, Really figuring out what your audience needs and who they want to see. Who do they want to receive this information from? That's going to really help you engage with your engage with your audience and make sure that your audience actually hears what you're saying. So when you're working on building this character in front of camera, I think you kind of just have to first realize how you usually talk. How do you usually speak to your friends? Who are you as a, as a person? Are you the funny guy in your friend group, or are you the more quiet guy? And then kind of figure out, okay, as an audience member, if I'm looking for your services, what do I want from this person? Who would I trust? And those are the questions you need to ask yourself in order to, for you to find the perfect personality that clicks with who you originally were already, added with a little bit of refinement. Just, just tune it just a little bit so that the audience really clicks, and those are the steps I would take to kind of build that character in front of camera. So, what are some、uh, common mistakes that real estate professionals、uh, usually have when they're going, you know, when it comes to on camera on stage? I think I, I think I wouldn't limit it to real estate professionals. <laughs> I think a lot of professionals, when they speak on camera, they have this mentality that they have to present themselves in a certain way in order for people to take them seriously, and they have to use all this formal terminology and hold themselves a certain way and speak a certain unnatural and uncomfortable way where nobody actually wants to hear you. That's the common mistake that I would say most professionals make because they they so badly want to show that they know what they're doing. They're an expert in their field. You should trust them. I'm going to throw all of this fancy terminology at you just because I know what I'm talking about. But as an audience member, just ask yourself, Darren, if you're watching TV and this ad comes up and this this guy in a spiffy suit comes out and just starts talking about all this intense stuff that you you actually don't understand.、Hmm. You don't. Know that you can trust this person, but this person feels like they're being professional. So, as an audience member, when I'm watching this video with all of this crazy information just thrown at me in this 
really matter of fact, mundane way, I don't connect. As an audience member, I need to know that you know my needs and you're gonna give me the solution. That's kind of the main, I think every service or every business, that's their goal. So when you kind of have this character of this professional and rigid personality, I think that's when the audience tunes out. The interesting thing is that a lot of people that I know in my industry, they always be like, oh, Darren, like, why are you trying so hard to be casual? Why you wear like a t-shirt with jeans on? And then they always be like that. And I'll be like, hey, no one's going to listen to you, man. Yeah. And then they're not going to take you seriously because like it's a thousand people like that on camera. Right. So I, I want to know, like, is there any exercise or at least like how to be aware of you're doing that? Because I think it's very natural for a lot of people in our industry. Um, well, it comes from a lot of aspects because before filming, there's a lot of prep work you got to do. There's script, your script, what you want to say, your appearance, your 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 outfit, um, even the setting you're shooting in. All of this is going to contribute to making your video more approachable. But I think having that personality on camera is key because why are there so many YouTubers that are so popular now? They're getting millions upon billions of views and they're just these teenagers in their bedrooms being themselves why is that more captivating than this professional who's been you know doing doing their job for 30 years in the field and they yeah, have all this experience well it's personality so I think that's what it is when you want to be memorable when I think about real estate and I want to come up with one person who am I going to remember is that going to be you why am I going to remember you how are you going to make yourself memorable I think personality aspect is kind of the soul and the core of of you as an on-screen presenter so when it comes to that right how do you learn about what your audience wants and then for your on-screen characters or the person that you're portraying mm -hmm. how would you provide a service for them well it's important for you to figure out your target audience their age range, their demographic, where did they grow up, their approximate financial situation, what do they like to do, what are their lifestyles like? Because culturally that's going to make a huge difference in how you present yourself. So for instance, with my day job, I act in a local sitcom, a long running sitcom that's a very local television show. And how I present my character is through a lot of research with local culture. And I didn't grow up here. So, so that is something that I would do because I understand the audience that my show is catering to. But if I was a working professional and my catered audience is, you know, 30 to 40, 30 to 50, what do they like? What, what's the content that they're already watching? Why do they like that stuff? You know, watch it watch it yourself ask yourself what you like you know who is there a speaker that really captivates you watch them why do they captivate you what's that charisma what's that je ne sais quoi that they have that i don't those are the questions that i think you have to really it's kind of analyzing it's critical thinking it's analyzing it's asking yourself questions and that's how you know okay this is my target audience this is my market that i'm trying to cater to and oh, this is what they like in their lifestyle, so therefore these are probably what their needs are. And once I know what their needs are, I'm going to be able to find those solutions. No, I, I'm actually glad you talk about the character building mm -hmm. because I want to know what you think of a professional, think about my character on screen. <laughs> so so let's, let's break it down. I think I think my audience is, you know, from 28 to mm -hmm. 35 to 40 years old, mm -hmm. usually male dominant. Mm -hmm. They are usually coming back from overseas, live in Hong Kong, they're thinking about uh, learning about overseas real estate information. So um, with that, how would you think about my character and what do you think I can improve on? I think your audience base is pretty broad. It's kind of like the expat uh, lifestyle in Hong Kong. Um, so the good thing is you don't really have to learn too much Chinese because <laughs> yeah, yeah. um, you don't need it. Um, but I think with your character on, on screen, honestly, I know you personally and watching you on screen, I don't know that guy. Like, who is this person? Um, when we talk in person, you're, you're just 
more you're you're obviously more natural and you're in your own element but on camera i can see you're a little bit nervous maybe a little bit anxious so you stutter a little bit more even more so than you do normally so it's just i think getting getting comfortable in front of camera and and kind of figuring out who which parts of your personality you want to bring out more in front of the camera so that you build that character so with your audience base i think you don't need to be like ridiculously funny you don't need to be you know throwing a joke every half an hour or every half a minute or something because you don't have an audience base that's younger generally like the younger kids nowadays their attention spans are getting like shorter so overall though i would say as a as a general trend in media what i've noticed is like videos are getting shorter and shorter um so that's just something that no matter what age range i think we can kind of keep keep our eye out for but with your audience fan base or with your audience base i think you don't need to be overtly heavy with your terminology mm. you need to be their friend the friend they went to college with that is doing this now and you need to be that guy that they feel approachable to so i think um having your outfit be smart casual works because with the suit jacket you are still a professional in a professional environment and in a professional atmosphere but with the jeans and the t-shirt it brings it back to more of like a youthful and approachable personal level so when i'm looking at this guy with your outfit and the way you look now it's more like oh maybe it's, he's a friend of a friend's mm. but if you came out with like a really formal suit i would find that a little bit more off-putting or a little bit less approachable so in that area i think you're doing great i think it's with your personality on camera you can be more more darren was like funnier more jokes or um more no. in your own element because the Darren I know is pretty confident and I can tell that on camera maybe you're just doing this you're just starting this a video series out so you know you're you're trying different stuff but you can kind of own it a little more if that makes sense and I I know that doesn't sound like actual advice mm -hmm. but having this kind of calmness and articulate way of being in being in yourself kind of it sh it gives this confidence and it gives this this is this is my situation this is my show i'm going to lead you as the guest mm, and i think I that's what you need a little bit more of and that you actually already have in your own personality i can just tell oh the cameras are on the lights are on oh, sh oh no like i maybe i don't know what i'm doing uh, am i do i look natural i'm going to try to look natural don't try just 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 be here mm. i know that sounds spiritual and abstract but but it's that's actually the key to do it. And I know that as a, lo a lot of professionals are going to hear this advice and think, "Oh, Andrea's here with her hippy dippy like drama <laughs> major stuff, like totally unattainable." But no, it's it's about having this still calmness in you so that whatever you say, it just comes out with intention. And that's the only thing that you're missing is that stillness, that that intention. I can feel a little that kind of like butterflies fluttering. A little bit in the way you speak. That's I all. see. So let's say because like before you talk about how you want to build a character to mm -hmm. serve your audience. So mm -hmm. what if today like, hey, you know what, Darren? I think you should go for a more local. You mm -hmm. should go for maybe older crowd. Mm -hmm. Let's say if like you're. By the way, thank you for your compliment. <laughs> but in my element now, let's say how do should I shift a little bit or adjust based on that audience change? I think um, I thought I think going local for you would be challenging, um, mainly because I feel like the local audience would go to someone who's local mm. for this type of advice because they feel that approachableness, right? So I feel like if you wanted to go local, you'd have to get really familiar with the language and the culture and the social norms in that. Realm, because it's very different than what we're used to with our Western upbringing. But I think if you wanted to branch out to an older audience, the way you're going now actually works with up to like fifty, sixties. I think, to be honest, because your personality isn't too funny. That's what I mean with you don't need to be the funny guy because your audience is already like a working professional level. So if you're a little bit too um a little bit too comic people won't take you seriously 
but that could work for a younger audience because they would feel like it's more approachable. So I think the, the older you get, the more you don't have to be comic, but that doesn't mean you have to be formal and and have that rigid personality again it's it's very different so i think just being having that confidence in yourself and speaking the way you would about something you're obviously an expert in that is how you're going to get the older the, that's how you're going to get the older audience to really pay attention to you hmm. so i think i think you're already like kind of the way you've branded your personality and and you've branded your platform i feel like is quite versatile in in the age range but it's definitely more geared towards like an, an international fan base kind of deal no it's great because i'm really flattered <laughs> and then um i have something that i need to work on mm -hmm. and uh we have two other episodes mm -hmm. where we talk about uh before the shooting or before on stage and talk about like during the stage and then on camera and this is your bread and butter so thanks so much for uh you know sharing and then uh you know Let's keep going. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. What do you think of this episode? Please let us know in the comment below and be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with us for upcoming videos. But before we go, I want to give a big shout out to Patina Design Lab. They're the one who help us in making our brand, our direction, as well as these videos. They are a strategic design consultancy firm to help businesses with a wide range of design services from industrial design, branding, graphic design, art direction, content creation, and many more. They are a very talented bunch, and I urge you to check out their website for their work. That's all for today, and see you next time. Cheers.